Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and this is a brand new section we're starting. It's kind of like a brand new chapter. So this is kind of like chapter nine, but it's section nine and it's covalent bonding and molecular orbitals. And this uh, section nine builds off of section seven and section eight, where we learned about electron configurations, atomic orbitals, Lewis structures and molecular geometries. So let's just get started with the notes here. Section nine, covalent bonding in molecular orbitals. Well, orbitals, we talked about a little bit earlier in section seven when we talked about electron configurations. But orbitals are the probability of finding an electron in a particular region of space. And it says here to see section seven. But some examples of atomic orbitals are the 2s, 3p, 4s, 6f, etc. And we learned about those when we did electron configurations. All right, so first let's do, let's make a few uh, background statements, some of them sort of a review of section seven and section eight, and then let's get into something called the localized electron model and hybridization. So before we do that, we have to make a few uh, kind of statements that prepare us to talk about hybridization. It says, the first bullet point there says, molecules are viewed as a collection of atoms held together by sharing electrons between their atomic orbitals. Remember, sharing electrons is covalent bonding. The valence electrons are arranged into something called a Lewis structure. And the Lewis structure is what we talked about in section eight. We talked about that extensively how to draw Lewis structures, the five rules for drawing Lewis structures. So after you've got the Lewis structure, you can then organize it into its proper shape, which is sometimes in three dimensions. So the molecular geometry is predicted by using something called Vesper theory. So Vesper theory, we also talked about in section eight, and that's when things with four attachments can uh, go into three dimensions and we get things like tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, etc. So I mentioned all that because I want to begin talking about how those particular bonds are formed in those Lewis structures. And to do that, we have to kind of take the atomic orbitals or the valence orbitals, and we have to manipulate them into something called hybrid orbitals. So let's take a closer look at the atomic orbitals used to share electrons and hence to make covalent bonds. So at the top of page two of our notes here, I'm gonna talk about our first major topic of section nine, and that is hybridization. Okay, sometimes hybridization and the discussion of hybridized hybrid orbitals, I should say, is called the localized electron model. And we'll write that down in our notes in just a few seconds. So hybridization is a procedure in which standard atomic orbitals, like the 2s and the 2p, etc., are combined to form new hybrid orbitals. Okay, so this is the first time we've seen the phrase hybrid orbitals, and sometimes they're called hybrid molecular orbitals, but I like to just call them hybrid orbitals because I don't want to confuse uh, the localized electron model with molecular orbital theory. We're going to talk about that much later in this section. So hybridization occurs when an atom's atomic orbitals, for example, carbon has 2s and 2p as its valence atomic orbitals, but hybridization occurs when an atom's atomic orbitals mix with the other, well, it says, hybridization occurs when an atom's atomic orbitals mix with the other atoms, atomic orbitals, to form new special hybrid orbitals. So how is this done? Well, we're gonna to need to take a closer look at what particular Lewis structure we're looking at, what type of a hybridization do we need, et cetera. And we're gonna get into that. We're gonna do examples for all five of the hybridization types. So just to reiterate, hybridization occurs when an atom's atomic orbitals mix with the other atoms atomic orbitals to form new special hybrid orbitals used for bonding and there are five types of hybridization sp3 sp2 
SP, DSP3, and D2SP3. All right. Now sometimes those last two are referred to as SP3D and SP3D squared, but it's the same thing. So those are the five hybrid orbitals, and these are this entire process that I'm talking about is referred to as the localized electron model. All right. So let's just take these in order. The first one I see there in that box is sp3. So let's talk um, in detail about sp3 hybridization. And sp3 hybridization, sp3 hybridization will be our first one. And to do this example, we're going we're to talk about CH4. So CH4, well, an isolated carbon atom, if you just had free carbon and you were in section 7 and you wanted to assign its electron configuration, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, wouldn't it? Now the valence orbitals in that particular instance are the 2s and the 2p. So the valence orbitals are the outermost orbitals. They're the ones involved in bonding. Those are the ones that we're going to use. Those are the ones we're going to use and mix to make hybrid orbitals. So at the top of our page of notes here, it says, because the 2s and 2p atomic orbitals on an isolated carbon, by isolated, I mean a freestanding carbon um, as if it were not involved in bonding, okay? So because the 2s and 2p atomic orbitals on an isolated carbon atom are not ideal for bonding, they undergo hybridization. The reason why they're not ideal for bonding is you have an s and you have you have two S's, two S electrons, and two P electrons. So, so you have an S atomic orbital, and you have three two P atomic orbitals. And we need four identical bonding types. We need to make a carbon-hydrogen bond, a second, a third, and a fourth carbon-hydrogen bond. And we want the bonding in those to be identical. So that's why we have to undergo this hybridization. Because if you look on the left here, that left column, you have the atomic orbitals in a free, isolated carbon atom. We have to mix those into four equivalent new hybrid orbitals. We need to have four because we're going to make four single bonds from carbon to hydrogen. Okay, so the sp3, by the way, is named that way because those four hybrid orbitals are made from the mix of one s orbital, the 2s, and three 2p orbitals. Okay. So the right-hand column after hybridization are the hybrid orbitals in carbon in a CH4 molecule. So like I was kind of saying off the cuff earlier, I now want to put it into our notes. It says, this hybridization makes sense. It's fair to think that carbon makes four equivalent bonds to each of those four hydrogens that it's surrounded, that it's surrounded by, right? CH4. So this hybridization makes sense. It's fair to think that carbon makes four equivalent bonds arranged in the tetrahedral formation. We learned in section eight, when we talked about molecular geometries, that we have this tetrahedral arrangement for CH4. Now to put this into the hybrid orbital schematic or to sketch it all out, I've got my carbon and it's got four lobes hanging off of it. Okay, and those four lobes are my sp3 orbitals and where they cross over with hydrogen's 1s atomic orbital is where the electrons are being shared. So you see I got the little uh, electrons in the kind of the interface or the in-between area between my sp3 hybrid orbital and my 1s atomic orbital on hydrogen. Okay, so now we have four equivalent bonds arranged tetrahedrally. This is exactly what we wanted. And we could only get this if carbon had four equivalent sp3 orbitals to do that okay wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to do that with one atomic orbital that's a 2s and three that were two p's it just wouldn't work we had to mix them we had to hybridize them so whenever a set of equivalent tetrahedral atomic orbitals is required the central atom that requires those four equivalent bonds is going to adopt an sp3 hybridization. So whenever a set of equivalent tetrahedral atomic orbitals is required by an atom, such as carbon in the last example, the atom adopts a set of sp3 orbitals. Now it doesn't have to be four atoms, 
For example, we learned that with NH3, right? NH3 makes three atoms attached to it, three hydrogens plus a lone pair. So that could also be sp3. Um, H2O, the oxygen has two hydrogens, two lone pairs. That's four equivalent uh, hybrid orbitals required or needed. So that's sp3 hybridization. In the next video, I'm going to talk about sp2 hybridization, sp hybridization, and then we'll go on from there and do d2 sp3, dsp3, and then we'll get into uh, molecular orbital, okay, using a sigma, sigma star, and stuff like that. So that's it for this video. And uh, if you like the way I do these handwritten chemistry notes, you can find all my stuff at chemistrynotes.com. I've got organic chemistry notes and general chemistry notes all in one easy place, easy to download. All right, so I'll see you for the next video.